Awareness Personnel Policy Committee will come to order. Do we have any members of the public present online? And none in the boardroom. Okay, we will move to the first item. Items for discussion, landscape conversions, new business. Chris, you want to take that? Certainly. So, um, I want to show both of uh, the board members some of the landscape conversions that's going on out at Lake San Marcos. It is a partnership between the county of San Diego. Lake San Marcos is an unincorporated area. The San Diego County Water Authority ourselves and then the actual homeowners associations, but then the vendors that the homeowners associations um, selected to do the actual work. So it's kind of an involved process with a lot of uh, different entities and we're all working together to change out grass and put in low water use plants. You'll see uh, Jamie Milani from the County of San Diego and then also Joni German from the Water Authority in the video. Joni is a good contact for us. I call her Captain Marvel because she kind of looks like her and she's super friendly, super helpful. She's, she's exactly who you'd want to work with on these types of projects. And so um, the other point in showing the video is the second item where, where I'm talking about the city of San Marcos. They're basically wanting to do something similar, but because it's in a city, they're not going to get the support from the county of San Diego. So it'll be more us, the water authority, um, city staff, and then the incentives available from Metropolitan. So let me go ahead and see if I can do this video share. Can you see it on your screens or no? No. Not yet. and I work for the County of San Diego's Watershed Protection Program. The Landscape Optimization Service is part of our broader Waterscape Rebate Program at the county, and it's created to help commercial property owners, such as HOAs or other large landscapes, replace turf grass with more sustainable landscaping. It's a service that's offered free to large landscapes, and it helps them get the most out of the rebates that are available. comes both from participants that want to reach out to us, they find us through our website or other marketing materials, and then there are priority watershed areas. For example, in the Vallecitos Water District, the Lake San Marcos area is a priority area for the county, and so we reach out to HOAs in areas like this to try and recruit participants to the program. The rebate amount varies because the rebates are provided by several different agencies. The Metropolitan Water District provides a rebate, San Diego County Water Authority provides a rebate, and the County of San Diego provides a rebate. And these are all stacked on top of each other and they're available to different groups. It depends on where you're located, what funds are available at the time that you apply. But the rebates typically range from you know, $3 per square foot to $6 per square foot. At the county, we will help you figure out what you're eligible for before you proceed with the project. We are always here for our customers. As the process continues, we can help coordinate with the water districts, such as Vallecitos in this case. If there's ever any challenges with the rebate application process or anything like that, we're here to help. We walk them through any of the challenges that they're having with those applications. Currently, the county is working with four HOAs in the Lake San Marcos area, which is in the Vallecitos Water District. So there are 
are really important water quality benefits to undertaking these type of landscape transformations. For one thing, with the removal of turf grass, you're removing some of the risk of water irrigation runoff, so overspray or irrigation leaks or other things that lead to water runoff during dry weather. Another thing is the sustainable landscapes contain mulch typically, and those types of soils often have a higher ability to retain water, so it also has a wet weather benefit. All of these projects include a stormwater feature, which can have wet weather benefits. Some of the projects, including the one at Panorama HOA, opt to apply for the county's dollar per square foot native plant rebate. On top of all the other rebates that these HOAs can get, we'll pay another dollar per square foot if they choose to replant with native plantings. Those have a lot of benefits for the ecology of San Diego County. When the county does outreach and education for HOAs, we really try to focus on all of the benefits that the HOA will experience in addition to the water quality benefits. So for example, that might include calculating an estimate of their water cost savings and just documenting that and putting it on paper or preparing presentations for the HOA board so that they can have some tools to communicate with the residents about the broader benefits of projects like this. The county also has a very extensive outreach and education program. We offer free workshops through a number of local partners. We sponsor cleanups throughout the unincorporated county and we attend lots of public fairs and things trying to promote both our rebate program and just general knowledge and and education about the health of our watersheds in San Diego County. Hi, I'm Joni German. I'm a water resources specialist with the San Diego County Water Authority. San Diego County Water Authority is the wholesale water provider in our region. The Vallecitos Water District is your retail agency providing water directly to you. The San Diego County Water Authority has spent the last 30 years trying to make our region more drought resilient. While droughts are cyclical, now they're hotter, they're drier, and they're lasting a lot longer. The Water Authority has looked to our partners, like the County of San Diego's Watershed Protection Program, to help us meet these challenges. The beauty of this partnership is that the Water Authority is able to achieve water use efficiency, and at the same time, the county is able to see water quality benefits in the form of reduced runoff. Here in San Marcos, the Panorama HOA project is a great example of how the County of San Diego and the Water Authority have come together to help a turf conversion project. The beauty of the Landscape Optimization Service is that it's multiple agencies coming together to help you, our region's residents, save water and save money. This project in particular is supported by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, the San Diego County Water Authority, the County of San Diego's Watershed Protection Program, and the Vallecitos Water District. This project here in Lake San Marcos is a great example of a successful turf conversion project supported by multiple agencies through the Landscape Optimization Service. Panorama HOA removed 30,000 square feet of thirsty turf and replaced it with sustainable landscaping, including 14,000 square feet of native landscape. The role of the San Diego County Water Authority in the Landscape Optimization Service is to provide technical assistance in the form of water smart checkups and to provide education to homeowners associations, commercial properties, and single family residential homeowners. The Waterscape Rebate Program is unique because it's actually a stacked incentive program. Three government agencies have come together to provide individual funding in one location. The Water Authority has partnered with the County of San Diego on this program to help us make these programs go farther. Together we tell a more compelling story, not just about water use efficiency, but also about water quality. Here in San Diego County, we're used to living in beautiful, lush, colorful landscapes. And sustainable landscapes can be that. It's a plant choice. And there are thousands of plants that are colorful, beautiful, and low water use. They'll thrive in our region. And we're here to help you find those plants and find a landscape that you can live in. So the HOAs that have participated in the program thus far have been really happy with the, the outcome, so the design, we've gotten feedback that residents really like them, they're seeing a lot more wildlife, hummingbirds and butterflies. Yeah, this is Don Nordloff, I'm a resident here in Panorama, and I was really happy to see this project come to fruition. Beautiful local flora added to our neighborhood, and also it's the right thing to do for 
saving money as well as saving water for San Diego County. Hi, my name's Amber Raganti. I'm the HOA president of Panorama at Lake San Marcos. The Panorama HOA decided to participate in the landscape optimization program due to a series of landscape aging out and an opportunity that one of the other board members brought about this project being a rebate from the county and the process would be managed by a third party and be little to no effort to the HOA. The process has been really easy working with Monarch who coordinated and designed the landscape. Also the bids that went out that ultimately we picked O'Connell who has done a amazing job with little to no oversight. We're really pleased with the project. The residents at Panorama were really happy with the process, especially though that there was no cost, and a lot of them are also concerned about the water and the drought, the effect of the water bills to their landscape, and the overall response has been amazing. I would suggest to any HOA to look into this landscape optimization program. It's been such a benefit. It's been easy. The whole process has been a lot smoother than I thought it would be, and I would recommend it to anybody. Hello, my name is Jack Rush. I am Vice President of Operations for O'Connell Landscape Maintenance. What was nice working with this program is we partnered with both the HOA, Monarch Environmental, to create a sustainable landscape. And it wasn't that I was just given a set of plans and you have to build off this. What we did is we looked at the plant material and discussed with the designer, Monarch, and the HOA and said, you know what, some of this plant material might work. We might want to space plant material differently. So between our collaborative effort, we were able to get a design that we feel is going to work. The thing we want to make sure of is we space plant material far enough apart as well as have it so that it grows together and establishes for the long term. You are going to receive water savings. However, with plant establishment, you're probably your first year you're not going to see a savings. The reason being is, is we're going to be overwatering to establish the roots of these plant materials. Once the plant material is established, then you can cut way back. And with this type of palette that has been selected, you're going to probably be in the one third to 75% savings from the current usage, what you are using for your turf. If an HOA would like to participate in the Landscape Optimization Service, they can reach out to us through our website. We will then begin a process with them that starts with a site assessment. We'll look at how much turf that they would like to remove and how much water quality benefit they will get from, from that turf removal process. So for HOA, they have faced a lot of rising water costs. It's very expensive to keep turf grass alive and green through our San Diego climate, especially in the summer when it's so hot. So, you know, HOAs are looking to reduce the cost of their water bills and this is one way that we can help them do that. We can all play a role in making sure our families, communities, and future generations have clean water. While funding lasts, the Waterscape Rebate Program offers residents, commercial properties, and agricultural properties a range of benefits that can help them transform their landscapes. This can be everything from rain barrels, cisterns, to full turf replacement, and available to residents of the unincorporated county. The goal of our rebates is to help the community make sustainable choices and support the quality of our watersheds. Very nice. That's great. Yeah. But, yeah, that uh, that's Alicia put that video together. So uh, pretty, pretty, pretty comprehensive video on what's going on there. Um, she has a shorter one for some of the other ones because we don't need to tell the same story again about all the participants, but she's got a nice one with, uh, um, I think, Sunrise Point that's a lot shorter. It's more like a four-minute video because you, you don't need to have as many people talking about it and so forth. But... These are the efforts. I think we're up to six of the different HOAs within Lake San Marcos that are participating in this. And a big part of it was um, we did the outreach here, making sure these HOAs knew that this was available to them. It's a lot of, a lot of difficulty to get the HOA to take action. It's real easy to just kind of do nothing. And the, the effort 
here was to make sure that these HOAs knew that this was available, that they were going to be able to stack these incentives one upon another and be able to get this done without really costing the HOA anything and then have it done professionally versus, you know, people just trying to make it up as they go. So um, a real positive effort to replace uh, thirsty turf in our service area. That's great. And, and this video is provided to HOAs as like uh, material to inform them and get them excited about exactly, this Exactly. Exactly. This was the first one that got done was, was panorama yeah. up high. I guess that's why they call it panorama mm -hmm. up high, kind of looking down at the, at the lake there. So um, just a, a real quality video on, the, on efforts and, you know, multiple days where Alicia had to go out and get different uh, shots of the action, the before and after, and even the mid-level stuff when it was going in and, and such like that. So um, real proud of that video. Yeah, I, I think you should be. I think that, that that video really explains it in a comprehensive way that, at least for the unincorporated areas, that they'll be, they'll have sort of wraparound services for if they decide to go forward with the program, that there will be somebody helping them all along the way. Truly. And I think the, you know, the, the pictures are, are wonderful because they show the transformation. And I also like that, um, you know, that it was, it was made pretty clear that the savings won't necessarily come the first year, but it'll come in years, you know, two onward. And I, I really like that. You mentioned that the city of San Marcos wants to do something similar so um, I have some questions about that. I presume we're going to play a role. Absolutely. Should we just segue to that at this point? Okay. So um, City of San Marcos uh, just recently reached out to me. Uh, Reed Thornberry, he's the, he's the manager over at uh, Stormwater Pollution Prevention. They've had some studies done, and they're getting a lot of dry weather flow. They've realized a lot of it is in the middle of the night, you know, at uh, 3 in the morning. Um, they're, they're, they did a study, they got a lot of dry weather flows coming off, which just means irrigation runoff is, is what it means. And they, because they're not part of, they're, they're incorporated, they're not part of uh, what we would call the Sa San Diego County area, um, they want to do something similar. They want to partner with us to reach out first to HOAs, but then follow up with homeowners. Uh, and it's their, they're calling it their, I'm sorry, I wrote all over it, their Water Smart Landscape Initiative. And they want to have a multi-agency thing as well. And we will be able to partner with the Water Authority and, of course, Metropolitan Water District of Southern California provides the lion's share of the rebate. But to help HOAs that are in City of San Marcos proper do something similar. So it won't be exactly the same, but just kind of similar effort partnering with the city of San Marcos on this. So they're proposing they would be the point agency? Yes. Okay, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> because I think, I think that it's great, you know, there needs to be one point of contact, and I'm, I'm, you know, I know that our staff is already very busy. So I think that that sounds like a, a great program to participate in. Are they planning on having are they doing like a road show around to the HOA meetings to introduce the program or? Yep, exactly. Okay. Um, it probably won't get really underway until the summertime. That's kind of their, their timeline okay. per se, but we're just willing to partner with them. It's, it's something we need to do anyway. Um, the good news that, that, I mean, not good news, but the, the good information that I got out of it was, you know, this irrigation is happening in the middle of the night where they're, and where they're getting these, dry weather flows and it's meaning that people are irrigating, you know, in the wee hours of the morning, but obviously it's not, they're, they're not keeping it on the landscape. Mm -hmm. It's, it's running off mm -hmm. and the runoff causes problems for the city and their stormwater program. But I, I, being the water conservation guy, I don't want that to happen either. Mm -hmm. Neither mm -hmm. one of us wants that to happen. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the effort is that we will be partnering up with them and, and, uh, providing, um, informational sessions to HOAs within the San Marcos city proper to educate them and, and help to make them make an effort to change out their landscaping as well. Great. I think it sounds like a great program. Um, is, are, is this for information only or are you looking for us for no, any kind of input? Only. Just okay. one comment, maybe a question for Chris. 
So in the Lake San Marcos examples, did the county have a financial role or was it a coordination? Yes, role? they did. They did. They did have a financial role. And do you envision San Marcos assuming that same financial role for the city projects? Now, how deeply and how much funding they provide is, you know, not clear at this point. But there's more than just stormwater that's that's over there. They have a um, different departments that are going to be engaged in this. They have like a sustainability department that was on the call with us the other day. So there's there's multiple departments, including like Park and Rec and their open space and so forth, that you know are all going to be working on this um, group effort. So I, I don't see us specifically having to provide a financial incentive. It's not like I'm looking for budget money for this. It's uh, it's just, just a partnership to try and make this effort to be, get HOAs to make this change. So primarily the incentives would come from MET and do, do we also provide incentives or no? So County Water Authority probably will, but okay. Palacitos won't. Okay, understood. Um, it's great that they're partnering with HOAs because if if the intent is eventually to roll this out to homeowners, homeowners will have to get their landscape cleared through the HOAs anyway. So I'm glad they're beginning with that end in mind. What, what kinds of incentives are we looking at? I mean, is it, have they communicated to you that the incentives will be sort of comparable to what the county has done with their partnership? Or? Yes, and, and Metropolitan has their programs. So does the County Water Authority. They should be able to stack both of those on top of each other. Um, I, I can't recall whether the, the native plant species was provided by the Water Authority or the San Diego County. So, uh, there's certain times when, when you're hearing that name, you, you lose track of which one it was. Um, so there was an extra incentive that was provided for putting in the native plants. And I think that was the San Diego County, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. What, what do you envision the impact and sort of what, what will it look like from our perspective for staff um, as we participate in the partnership? What so will it look like? probably the outreach that we would do to the specific HOAs. Eventually they plan to roll, it, to roll this out to individual homeowners, um, single family dwellings. I think that's a little further down the road and it's hard, you, you get more bang for your buck going after, you know, condominiums with um, common landscaped areas where you can get a whole bunch versus, you know, singly each, each house uh, one at a time. So um, the effort will be the outreach to the HOAs themselves, making sure we get on their agendas and make presentations to the HOA's board of directors and hopefully get them to um, join. So Viacitos will be partnering with the city of San Marcos on the road show portion of it to go to the HOA's. Okay, thank you. Director Grosset, any other comments or questions? The only other thing I would say is, um, you know, multifamily investing is so hot right now that um, there's all these Facebook groups and, and um, um, you know, local uh, um, <laughs> meetups for it. So it might be a, another good use of the video and, and um, um, good um, roadshow material for you to not only be with uh, HOAs, but uh, people that own, you know, eight family, 16 family sites, you know. So just an idea. Sure enough. Where else is, where is the video available? Is it, is it on social media? Mm -hmm. it's on our mm -hmm. website? Yeah, it's on our website. Um, additionally, the county and the water authority are sharing it as well because it benefits them as well. Great. That's more, that's more publicity for our, for our folks. That's great. Well, it's a great video. It sounds like a great program. Thank you. Any other comments or questions about that before we move on? Nope. Okay, so have we, have we also covered, um, we've covered one and two then, so now we're on to three, right? <laughs> okay, building program update. Do you want to jump in or do I need to jump in? Well, the one thing I did want to say was I, we did apply for a grant from uh, Metropolitan Water District. I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but we did apply for a grant from Metropolitan Water District. 
I thought we would get it. I thought we had a really good chance, and unfortunately, we did not get the oh, grant. Oh, darn. Yeah. Yeah, that was for $50,000, yeah. which would have been a couple more schools. It would have been funding for Bill's program. Okay. So it sounds like Bill has a teacher lined up for uh, Double Peak. Um, they're probably going to be starting the program right after spring break, so probably the first, second week of April. Uh, I met with Bill Friday, and he indicated that the uh, teacher that he's in contact with at Double Peak thinks that the other two fifth grade teachers may also want to do it at the same time. Bill said that would cost a little bit more money, and I told him we had 25000 budgeted this year. He thinks it would be about another $8,000. So I'm not asking for money right now, but uh, as we work out the details with Bill, there may be an, a, a need to augment the budget. I'm not sure if Chris's budget has enough remaining funds. I've got, I, I, I budgeted 41500 41, I, I think that should be able to cover it. Um, okay. Some of the other funds are for different activities, but I haven't seen it to the same level. Um, yeah. Buses to Jack's Pond and things like that haven't, right. haven't really come to fruition. So. so it's a relatively minor increase to get to to triple the number of classrooms, so I think it'd be well worth it, but Bill has to make sure that he has the horsepower and the bandwidth to do three classes at the same time, and he's trying to figure out how to structure it. Would each of the three classes do the same thing, or would they take different components of the program and he'd focus on each? So he's got some details to work out before he commits to whether he could do all three classrooms, and then, then we'll work out the financial details after that. It's an impact on us, too, because if there's three classes, we often have staff members that go there and spend a day. I think Chris has been there. I've been there. Chris Tapia from our meters department has been there. So if there's three classes, that could be triple the effort, too. So we have to make, be cognizant of that as well. But uh, it's moving forward, and that's the good news. And um, disappointing we didn't get the funding. But we will be putting money, and I assume we're going to be putting money in the upcoming budget to f pay for it for next year as well. I think that's great. Um, you know, and you all can count on me if you need somebody on site to, as long as I have a little bit of notice, I'm happy to go and, and pitch in and help. But I, I, I think that's wonderful, and I, I think that, you know, from one classroom last year to potentially three this year, um, you know, it's still in its pilot phase. We're still sort of testing things out and working out the kinks, but it sounds like it's moving forward well, and it's moving forward smoothly, and if we are able to put it into three classrooms this year, then that'll give us an idea of whether or not the scale is appropriate when we start to look at it for next year and we consider other schools. Um, you know, I think, I think that there's, there's so many benefits to this program. It really gives kids hands-on opportunity and that's, that's what I love about it. You know, my wife's experience with the program, it, it depends heavily on parent involvement and at her school, they get a lot of parent involvement. And I think at Double Peak, they'll see the same thing. But Bill and I have spoken, and Director Boyd Hodgson, I think you and I have spoken about this too, that some schools don't get that same level of parent involvement. They may have two working parents. So Bill has to figure that out. What does it mean? Where do you get those extra resources to help deliver the program in the classroom when the school doesn't get that level of parent involvement? So that, that may hurt the, the penetration into the district market. but. Uh, baby steps, right? We're, we're, every year we'll hopefully grow this program a little bit at a time and we'll figure out how to address those what may be obstacles in the, in the way. You know, and I think if we, next year, if, if we decide that we are going to do this program next year, perhaps we can try to target a school and start those conversations early. If it's a school where there might be some question about ability to have parental involvement, maybe we can have those conversations early and start um, you know, trying to brainstorm with the school to find out if there's a way that we can, you know, to, to work around that potential issue. I, you know, I, I personally would hate for that to be a barrier, although realistically it is. I mean, we, we know that. But maybe we can start early and try to, try to think about how we can mitigate that. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think we need to work more closely with Bill to try to figure out how to get that in with the school district where they can help us identify not just the school but the teachers and maybe find ways to overcome those what could be a barrier. So, but uh, I, I think we'll, we'll learn a lot as this program progresses to find ways to do that because it was challenging 
for Bill to find a teacher this year. It took longer than he thought it would. Luckily, it happened in a timely manner, but uh, starting earlier next year would probably be better. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Just uh, inspired by the video we just saw, a series of videos for kids would be cool in the future. It's just something to think about. Okay, number four, San Diego County Water Authority desalination statistics and education. This is something that I've talked about a couple of times in, in past meetings. Having just attended the Cal Desal conference, I, you know, I, I learned quite a lot about the desalination process and the different methodologies that it can be done. Um, really interesting. One program or one, one person on a panel, they have a company where they, they have wave generated desalination. It's mechanical using the gravity of the waves. They have a, um, a equipment that does that. So I thought that was really interesting. And you know, when I, when I first was running for the seat, I had a lot of questions about the desal plant. And I think that there's, there's a lot of information out there about the desal plant, some of it accurate, some of it not. And one of the things that I was hoping to perhaps start a dialogue about is some kind of education around the statistics, in particular um, around marine marine life mortality, because that seems to be the issue that, that comes up frequently. So I, I met a gentleman at the Cal Desal uh, conference. He's, he happens to be the treasurer of that organization and happens to live in San Alejo. So he, he came up to me and said, you know, if you'd like to, to have a conversation or if you'd like for me to come talk, he'd be willing to do that. So I put that here just to find out if there's, if there's interest in that, you know, I think that I think we really appreciated having the gentleman that was just here in the last board meeting talk about some of these macro issues that assume a certain level of education that some folks on the board and certainly in the public may not have. So I thought, why not bring him in? And um, I'm happy to do that that legwork. I've got his contact information. Um, if there's interest in that and potentially learning more about that, having some data presented. Um, I, I, I didn't have that same offer from the individual who was presenting actual scientific experiments and data. Um, he is, uh, I forget where he is based, but um, he had, you know, he's bringing a publication forward to be published in a peer-reviewed journal around desalination, but, um, we have somebody from San Diego County Water Authority that can help educate us, so I wanted to just bring that up, see what you thought. I love the idea. I would love to learn more about it. And, and, yeah. uh, it's really interesting and fascinating okay. and, and definitely uh, setting um, um, the record straight on, on some of uh, this uh, uh, misconstrued opinions about the place. Mm -hmm. so I think that's a great idea. So were you thinking to have a presentation here or at a board level? Board, I assume, or? Well, I, I wouldn't want to have him do it twice. Right. It seems like the board level is I, more appropriate. I do, too. Yeah. And, um, you know, the board, the board meetings get more visibility than the committee meetings do. Right. So I, um, I, I think probably the board level would yeah. be better. And depending on what data are available and what kind of graphics and things like that, it might be the case that we would want to put some of this information on our website so that people, you know, don't have to watch the board meeting if they don't want to, but they, you know, they might be able to go on our website and, and understand some of, you know, wh what desalination is, um, you know, how much of our water comes from the desal plant, um, how it works, things like that. Yeah, with the uh, environmental angle, I think the timing is good because they're in the process of upgrading the intake, putting in the new mm -hmm. intake structure. Right. So, um, you're probably talking about Jeremy Crutchfield mm -hmm. of the right. Water mm -hmm. Authority. So, yep. Jer Jeremy could explain the history of the desal plant, how it works today, why there was a change, what caused us to go from the the, the ones through cooling operation that supported the power plant to now needing a new intake structure, mm -hmm. and the cost of that, and the environmental benefits associated with that, and then sprinkling statistics throughout there for 
the macro, what does the power plant, or I'm sorry, the D cell plant do from a regional level, and what benefit does Vicedos receive from it? So mm -hmm. I can see it covering all of those things. I, I think you just articulated that very well. I think that's exactly what what would be beneficial. And you know, one thing that I'll point out is that it, at the Cal D cell conference, I mean, there were everybody there was pro D cell, right? I mean, yeah. that's that's what it that's what the organization does. But at no point did anyone ever say, yeah, this is the only way we need to diversify our water sources. They all recognize that there are multiple ways to diversify. And I think that uh, there is a perception out there that when we talk about desal, that many of us think that that is the only way to diversify. And I, I don't think anybody thinks that. So I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to put that message out there too. This is one way. This is one way. And it's, it's clear that we do need to diversify. We need to invest more in stormwater you know, infrastructure, stormwater capture infrastructure, for example, as well. And that was acknowledged. All of these potential methodologies were acknowledged. And I think that, I think that helping frame desal as part, you know, one piece of the puzzle, it would be really helpful. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll, re I'll reach out to Jeremy. Oh, great. See if he's okay. uh, interested, we'll yeah. do it. And it could be a joint presentation, maybe staff and Jeremy great. getting the, the, the regional and the local approach. I think that's great. So. Yeah, okay. that sounds perfect. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to just write that down. Okay, so you'll reach out. That's the next step. I don't. I don't need to reach out. No. Nope. Okay, great. Thank you. I mean, feel free if you want to, but I can reach out. I know Jeremy. I'll reach out great. to Jeremy and see if he'd be okay. willing to do that. Okay. All right. I think that I think that that'll be really helpful. It'll educate our 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 public and our constituents. Um, I think the more we all know, the, the you know, the, the better it is for all of us. Okay, anything else on that? No? Okay. All right, number five, climate action plan update, next steps and action items. So um, I'm talking to pretty much anyone I meet <laughs> who's from a different agency about whether or not they have a climate action plan. And, you know, I know that we opened this dialogue last meeting. I'd like to continue talking about it. I was able to obtain an example, and I, I sent it out right before the meeting, so I don't expect that you will have seen that email. Yes, thank you, I'm glad you did. Um, from Valley Water, and they went a little bit of a different route. They, um, they did not hire a consultant, they did it all internally. And you know, I reckon there are pros and cons, right? It's staff time no matter what we're talking about. But, you know, to my mind, not knowing if you all have talked about it on your own, what I think would be really interesting, and I'm prepared to do this, is to look through these two doc these two examples that we have now. We have one from Coachella Valley and one from Valley Water. One was hired, uh, you know, one was created using a consultant, one was not. Look through it and just sort of start thinking about, okay, well, what about this climate action plan is you know, could we use as a template for us? What could we exactly do that they did? What could we do now? What's not possible to do now? What do we need more information about? And, and I know that there is some really important outstanding information that we need before we'll be able to, to do this. So I guess my ask, and I'm willing to do this, because I, 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 I know you all are very busy, is to go through and just flag things, um, you know, saying, Yes, you know, we, as it turns out, we've already done something like this, and this could go in the report. And I think there's probably quite a few things that we have done as an agency that could become eventually part of a climate action plan, kind of retrofitting, that we've already done, that we've already got in progress. And I think that's the place to start. That's the low-hanging fruit, and that's the easy lift while we're waiting for some of this other important information to come through. What are, what are folks' thoughts on that? Uh, I haven't had a chance to look at the Valley Water example mm -hmm. at all, so yep. I don't know um, how extensive it was. Mm -hmm. certainly haven't reached out to them to see what kind of uh, resource impact it was. That, mm -hmm. that would be my biggest concern. Yep. We're busy. Yep. We're very busy here. So I'm, I'm concerned that if we devoted the resources towards uh, internally preparing a climate action plan, that something's going to get delayed. And we'd have to you know, talk about what those things are. Mm -hmm. um, we have the structure of the um, um, 
tactical plan initiatives, which take a considerable amount of our effort and guiding what we're doing going forward. So that may have to be restructured if we focused on this. If we were to do a climate action plan right now, I'd say it's probably a better use of a consultant to do. I'm not against, I, I want to spend some time and take a look at the Valley Water Experience, maybe reach out to them and see if there's a lessons learned. Sometimes you reach out and people say, I would never do that again. Boy, mm -hmm. did that consume the agency, right? And I, I'd like to hear that before we dove into the deep end of the pool. And hopefully we can get a good contact up there and they could be, you know, share with us their experience. That may be a good starting point. Mm -hmm. so. I, you know, I, I do have a contact. I don't know if he's the most appropriate contact. Um, he just happened to be the person that I met. Okay. <laughs> so, but I'm happy to forward that along. Yeah, if, if and and I, I don't think we're anywhere near ready to start this process. Um, but I do know that at some point we will have to start this process. And, you know, planning and thinking about it, I don't think, um, I, don't, I don't think that that's, you know, that's not going to be the bulk of the staff time and hours. But um, I'm just asking that we get, that we start thinking about it. Yeah. Because I, I, eventually I think we're all going to have to do these. And we don't want to, we don't want that to be the time that we start the process because, the, because there's probably going to be a deadline, may or may not be realistic, there might be penalties if we don't meet that deadline. So I guess that's my ask. Let's just start thinking about it. And to be clear, I, am, I don't think we're anywhere near ready to, to put pen to paper about it, but I do think that we've already done some things that could go into a climate action plan. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, there's a lot of things we've done uh, and things that we are doing. And one of the things mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about in an upcoming item is the Cal State San Marcos effort with our fleet electrification. That's yeah. a component of the umbrella that is the climate action plan, right? So that part of the effort, and I think what you're getting at, is that we could cobble together the things that we're already doing as a starting point and then maybe identify the gaps and then figure out what else do we have to do to put this thing together. Mm -hmm whatever this thing ends up being. Mm -hmm. Yes, the requirement to prepare a climate action plan does not pertain to us now, but it will. At some point in the future, mm. they're gonna ensure that every public agency has some semblance of a climate action plan. We're just not there yet. Any other comments or thoughts on that? Just if you can share that contact information, I'll reach out and yep. find out, and maybe get a little bit more background on Valley Waters experience and then maybe at the next meeting, if I'm able to get in touch with them, I can, I can share at least what I heard. Okay. And again, I, I, don't, I don't know if he's the person that you should be talking to about that, but he's a person that you he, can at least start with. He can point me to yeah. the right person. And mm -hmm. It's often just the first in is a good in, right? Mm, and they, sure. they can navigate their internal sure, sure. process. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Anything else about that? No. I agree with the uh, overall sentiment and... and um, assessment here uh, I think we're far off uh, and there's no real pain in continuing to uh, build a slow um, momentum here and, and um, the biggest concern is has already been shared pricing and timing and um, you know making sure that we're uh, calculated in, in, in the way in which we do this and not um, you know doing work that won't count for the future mm -hmm. uh, was the big concern I, I heard last time. Um, and uh, especially given the several things that we're talking about right now that should be increasing the budget fairly significantly with the MOU and, and other things. So just being, being sensitive to pricing and, and costs here. Um, but yeah, I see no harm in, in continuing to move the ball forward uh, in, in a uh, um, meaningful way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Number six, San Marcos Promise Experience, new business. Yes, so the San Marcos Promise is a local community-based organization that partners up with the San Marcos Unified School District to really try and help students plot their path forward, whatever it may be. It isn't just college. It's, you know, what's your future? What's your career? What are you going to do? And, you know, what are the, some of the tools to help you out with that? Um, had a tour for students here a few months back where they came in, had a chance to, you know, get the tour like we do for um, our water academy, very similar to that, lunch with the students, 
chance for them to sit down and eat and talk with staff individually. Um, so kind of the next level, um, San Marcos Promise did what they called an experience ship with the city of San Marcos. So they selected, you know, really a much smaller group, six individuals that would come and visit city staff at the city of San Marcos and kind of job shadow them. Um, and so this is scheduled for us to take place at the end of the month, March 28th through 30th. So it's when they're on their spring break and the students have to apply. They've got to be really interested. If, you, you know, if you're going to give up time on your spring break to go hang out with water staff, you've got to be really interested. So we're going to have six students wow. over uh, three days, kind of in, in, in pairs, where they'll job shadow staff uh, between like 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. each day uh, just to give a, a real up-close look at the different things that go on at the district. So that's what's coming up. That's fantastic. So they applied. Are they, are they seniors? Are they juniors? Or? So they didn't, they didn't dr drill it down to that level. Okay. I think it's open to any student that's a high school student. Okay. And um, again, the, the San Marcos Promise is putting together the application package and screening the candidates and so okay. forth. And um, they, they need to have a deep interest in this if they're going to give up the time for it. Sure. So, yeah. What departments are they going to go visit? So pretty much they'll get a chance to interact with, you know, operations and maintenance, engineering, uh, finance, and uh, water conservation. So they'll, they'll have chances pretty much everywhere. They're going to have, you know, basically um, six slots over the three-day period. And uh, they'll get to see quite a bit. And then the, the last group that went through, we had all age groups from freshmen to seniors. But most, really? of, most of them were juniors and seniors that, okay. that I met, at least. Do we know, um, maybe it's too early to tell, I don't know if you know the names, have any of them applied for our scholarship or no? I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, so they, so they haven't given me names yet either. Oh, so okay. okay. I'm, I'm not sure who's coming. So yeah. um, we have, just as long as we're on the subject, one scholarship app already showed up, so... And there's been questions. Um, several students have had questions. Okay. So. All right. I, uh, I, just tangentially talking about that, I, um, I stopped into Foothills Twin Oaks and personally invited them. I know we didn't get any applications yeah. from them last year. And I personally invited them and said, you know, it should be, it would be great if we saw a couple of applications or five or 10 or <laughs> whatever That's from great. them. So hopefully we will. Well, this program sounds like a great program. And you know, I know that I know that we have kind of an education intensive uh, focus now. And it does take staff time with the interns and you know now with this program too. But I look at it as this is how we build our pipeline for new folks coming in and we know that there's a need for that, so I appreciate that you are participating, and I know that it is, you know, that's a few days that staff is not going to be as productive as they would be ordinarily, but I think it's for the good of the community, and it really does a good, it, it does a good service for us too, from a public relations perspective, I think. Yeah, and I was I was real pleased. I've, I've gone out and talked to specific individual supervisors to, to get connection and say, hey, this is coming and I need your help with this. And really kind of ple pleasantly surprised with how positive everybody was about it. Good. You know, that it's in the middle of the day, so that doesn't necessarily work with our schedule really well. We have crews that get out really early in the morning, but, mm -hmm. you know, I was just pleased that uh, staff just, none of, them, none of them gave me any griefs and that, that's always helpful. Great. Okay. Yeah, it would certainly be helpful if some of the other agencies, other water districts, started doing these things. Because what I'm afraid of is we're going to build these wonderful pipelines that lead to other agencies right. for employment, right? <laughs> but, you know, that's, if that's what happens, then we've helped at least those people find meaningful work in their industry, which would be great. But uh, maybe Chris can start shaming his 
counterparts at other agencies right. into <laughs> developing similar <laughs> programs. Okay. Anything else with that? And so that's the 28th through the 30th. And yes, that is over spring break. So you're right. They do have to be interested. You know, if you're a junior or senior in high school and you're, you know, I don't, I don't know what juniors and seniors in high school these days do for spring break, but <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're willing to come here, then that means you must be pretty interested so, and motivated. Great. Chris, does the Promise have experience with this and see how many kids are willing to donate some of their spring break? So they, they did it similarly with the city of San Marcos, and they got enough students. It was the same thing so, so for spring break. Yeah, and, and, okay. and I think they were kind of pushing to see if we could do maybe more than six but I thought, you know, the city did six. I don't want to bite off more than the city did. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll try six and see how it goes. How many, how many employees does the city have? I, I, don't, I don't know, but okay. I know it's bigger than we are. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's less than three. Yeah, yeah it's less than 300. Okay, but potentially twice as many employees as yeah. us. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, so I think, I think that was probably a good call. Yeah. I mean, since we've never done it before, and yeah. you know, we have less less of a cushion to absorb absorb the young people coming in. Okay, well, great. Well, thank you, thank you for for finding out about that and and volunteering your staff and coordinating it. Okay, CSU San Marcos Senior Graduate Experience Update: Old Business. So um, I have met with the uh, with the group. Um, there's a couple brothers that are on the team, and uh, they're going to come visit us, I think, on Wednesday at 3 o'clock, and, and should be a good time of day. I think most of the vehicles will be back in the yard. They'll have a chance to look at it. I've been giving them info on California Air Resources Board, or CARB, as the acronym goes. Um, nicely, I, I sat in and watched... Um, one of the rulemaking sessions with CARB where they were talking about this. And I was doing other tasks at the time while the video conference was on, and it's easy to get distracted by other things on those video conferences. But uh, Glenn and James got a real nice synopsis from Tara Verde of what happened at this conference. And so I sent it to the, the students, like, hey, here's a synopsis of something that just happened. So, you know, read this it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna give you a, a good explanation um, as as background it was really obvious in that um, session that there are you know we're, we're being tasked with this the district is being tasked to electrify its fleet but you can see that there's really things that are really the problem children um, where we have like a big freighter that comes into a port with a bunch of uh, automobiles on it, and they're gonna unload all these automobiles and put them on the 18 wheelers and then truck them to wherever they go. And you've got all these diesel trucks idling, waiting to pick up these vehicles. And if you live in that community, you know, the air's bad. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's maybe, maybe what I took away was that's the guilty party that now everybody's in trouble for. You know, here's this action that happens that really is de detrimental to the air quality in a specific area, but now everybody's busted, and we all gotta, we all gotta get on board. Um, students have asked some questions, and staff have been able to respond. Um, there's some additional queries they have about uh, the cost of gasoline and things like that, and uh, trying to slice and dice into a format that they can use. But uh, Paperwork's all filled out. Glenn has signed the actual agreement, so everything is in process and a go, and we're moving forward. That sounds great. What what's the what's the outcome? What's the end product? So the biggest thing that we really want them to do is provide us with a, kind of a timeline for our Gantt chart or, or whatever um, implementation schedules. At what point do we have to have what done? Um, the legislation's pretty long, pretty convoluted. Um, there's uh, specific vehicles that we have that are we've given to them our complete fleet listing, and then the ages of the various vehicles and what our typical replacement schedule is for those vehicles, and what would be the sequence that we would replace the specific vehicles. 
So there's some delving for them to do into the actual CARB legislation itself and providing us with a timeline, but then also an, an implementation schedule. And as I see it, it's uh, you need to at least have um, a report or a study done of what your plan is, and so that's what they're going to be helping us with. And Chris, we're, we're also going to ask them to look at uh, charging infrastructure based on actual usage. So the type of vehicles, we're going to be grouping them into different usage types. Uh, I'll just give you a real easy example. For example, meter reader vehicle goes out every day, so there may be more charging infrastructure required for meter readers or inspectors, while some of the other vehicles, they could you could share four or five vehicles because they probably share the same charging infrastructure. Uh, we're not asking them, to obviously, to design it, but basically size it and kind of lay, lay it out. So this way, the district <laughs> has the ability to look at not only just based on planning, vehicle replacement by type and use over, let's say, the next 10, 15, 20 years, but also what infrastructure that we would have to build to accommodate the actual charging and mm -hmm. uh, maintenance of those type of vehicles. Very true. The, uh, yeah. In listening on that um, conference call, that seminar, it, it was real obvious that a lot of entities didn't have a place to do this. You know, they didn't have uh, a location to be able to charge the vehicles, you know, not, not just the district, but all these other entities that were looking at this um, task and, 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 and problem as well. Where are they going to charge these vehicles is, is a big part of the problem. Uh, including the infrastructure and the power requirements that will be required. What a learning experience for them. And that was the little selling point. We, we, we had to submit an application, and there was a point there like, what are the students going to get out of this? And I was like, this is going to be your problem. This, this is your future. This is your problem. It's coming your way. Mm -hmm. you, you know, this is your chance to get ahead of the curve on this because it's it's coming and and this is the next generation's issue and mm -hmm. so you know might be something you want to get in on and, and learn about and so we obviously were accepted yeah you know I think um, this requires so many moving parts and legislation and carb it's that's complicated you know just to sit through those meetings is really hard so they'll come out of this with a firm understanding from start to finish how to plan it, but not only that, how to think about planning it, you know, not just the, the steps that they took, but the logical order of the steps. And, I, and, and we benefit too. I think that's great. And the, the timeline for the students isn't particularly long, and I, I kind of have the feeling this, this is an ongoing issue for us, and we may want to do this again and again and again, that, mm -hmm. you know, we get through one stage with this group and then we may want to do something similar with another uh, group of students from Cal State San Marcos in future semesters, you know, mm -hmm. trying to help us find grants to fund these vehicles and things like that. Do they, do, are they going to make a presentation to the board once this is, once this group of students finishes their work? That wasn't specified in the scope, but that doesn't mean that we couldn't ask them to do that. I could certainly ask that. I think it'd be great. Yeah, I think they would do it. And also, they do a trade show at the end where they present it to the public as well, which the board would be welcome to, to visit as well and see all the other projects that, they, that were done. At. Should, should I reach out and ask them to do a board presentation? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think every opportunity that we have where we can showcase how we've partnered with the community is really helpful for us as an organization. And it gives them recognition, too. And, you know, there's a bit of pomp and circumstance that surrounds <laughs> the board meetings. You know, they, they need to, that's a skill also for them to learn, to come and present in a professional environment and, you know, present to governing bodies. That's important. So I agree. And we'll tell them if the fifth graders can come in and do it, then you surely can. <laughs> right. That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Shame them. Well, great. Well, thank you for that update. And I look forward to, um, to seeing their, their presentation. This is something that is very complicated that we've talked about in our meetings before. And it's nice to, it's nice to hand it off <laughs> to, to have them help figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments about that? Okay.
I think we are at the end of our meeting. All right, we are adjourned.